Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a pass exam question on hyperbolic functions. So let's take a look at this question. Question 3a, starting from the definitions of hyperbolic sine x and hyperbolic cos x in terms of exponentials, prove that hyperbolic cos 2x is equal to 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine squared x. So let's see how the proof is done. Let's go back to the paper and pen. So if you're unaware in terms of how to prove a hyperbolic identity using the definitions, I have created videos showing you how this is done and I'll provide links to those videos in the description below. So we need to start using the definitions of hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cos. Now remember, hyperbolic sine x has the following definition. It's e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2. So that's the definition of hyperbolic sine in terms of exponentials. And hyperbolic cos x has the definition e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. So that's the definition of hyperbolic cos in terms of the exponentials. So in order to prove a hyperbolic identity, we need to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So first of all let's consider the left hand side. So the left hand side is hyperbolic cos 2x. So let's use the definition. So the definition of hyperbolic cos in order to get hyperbolic cos 2x I simply replace the x's here by 2x's to give us e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x all over 2. So that is what we have on the left hand side when the definition is applied. Now we need to consider the right hand side. So let's consider the right hand side. So RHS refers to right hand side, LHS refers to left hand side. So on the right hand side we have 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine squared x, so 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine squared x. Let's use the definition of hyperbolic sine x here to give us 1 plus, so 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine x, which is e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2, but don't forget to square. Now let's do a side calculation and let's multiply out e to the x minus e to the minus x squared. So e to the x minus e to the minus x squared. So if we multiply out, we're going to have e to the 2x minus 2e to the power 0. So it's, it's 2 times e to the x times e to the minus x. And when you multiply terms of the same base, when you add the powers, that's how you got that 0. Plus e to the minus 2x. So that is what you should have when you multiply and expand this bracket. e to the 0 is 1. So we're going to have e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the minus 2x. So that is what you should have upon expansion of the numerator term. So if we use this in the main calculation we have that 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine squared x that is 1 plus 2 so 2 from here in a bracket the top term multiplied gave us e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the minus 2x divided by and 2 squared is 4. So that is what you should have upon replacement of this part of the side calculation in the main calculation. So I can cancel this 2 with the 4. 2 goes into 4 twice and if I now take a common denominator of 2 by taking a common denominator of 2 we're going to have on top 2 plus e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the minus 2x. So you'll have this as a result of taking a common denominator of 2. 
the 2 and the minus 2 will go to leave us with e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x all over 2. So if you observe, the left hand side, which is this term, does indeed match the right hand side, which when we simplified is exactly the same term. So let me close this by saying, since the left hand side is the same as the right hand side, so therefore the identity hyperbolic cos 2x is indeed 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine squared x. So that is how you would prove an identity. So if we go back to the question, so we need to solve the equation in part b, hyperbolic cos 2x minus 3 hyperbolic sine x is equal to 15 and we need to give our answers as exact logarithms. So let's think about this problem, let's go back to the paper and pen. Now if you're unfamiliar in terms of solving equations such as these, I have created a video showing you how it's done and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. However, let me show you how this is done for this particular example. So in this particular example, we need to use an identity to rewrite our equation in terms of sign. So the identity that we need to use is the one that we just proved. So we need to use this identity here. So let's apply that identity. So by using so by using the fact that hyperbolic cos 2x is 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine squared x. And if I replace the hyperbolic cos 2x by the very term, our equation will end up looking like 1 plus 2 hyperbolic sine squared x minus the 3 hyperbolic sine x is equal to 15. Now let's form a quadratic. So if I take this term, the 15 to the left hand side, we're going to end up with 2 hyperbolic sine squared x minus the 3 hyperbolic sine x. The 1 take away 15 is minus 14, that is equal to 0. Now, what I tend to do with equations like this is I use a substitution. So I tend to let t, since I have terms involving hyperbolic sine, I let t equal hyperbolic sine x so that I have a quadratic involving t. So if I replace the hyperbolic sine terms by t, I'll end up with 2t squared minus 3t minus 14 is equal to 0. Now you don't need to do this, um, you can just as well have this equation being solved to give you two equations involving hyperbolic sine. Now my idea is if I get the t values then I can have use those t values in order to find my hyperbolic sine x equations. Now, for this very quadratic, you can either factorise as it's factorisable, or you can use the formula. So, this can be factorised. The factors are 2t minus 7 and t plus 2. These should be the factors. So, you've got two values of t. Either 2t minus 7 is 0. That means that one of the values of t is 7 over 2. So, that's the first value of t or t plus 2 is 0 and if t plus 2 is 0 rearranging that will give you t is minus 2. Now if we go back to the substitution that I've used t is hyperbolic sine x and I have two values of t so since t is hyperbolic sine x let's see what happens when t equals 7 over 2. So when t is equal to 7 over 2, I'll end up with hyperbolic sine x when I replace the t value here, and that is equal to 7 over 2. And to work out x from here, x is the inverse hyperbolic sine of 7 over 2. 
Now, you can write this in terms of natural logarithms, and if you remember the definition of inverse hyperbolic sine x, the definition goes like this. It's ln x plus the root x squared plus 1. So if you're not familiar with the definition of the inverse hyperbolic sign, I have created videos showing you the derivation and also videos showing how this definition is applied. I'll provide links to those videos in the description below. So let's apply the definition in this very example here though. So if I replace the x's by 7 over 2's, this is what we're going to have. So replacing the x by 7 over 2 here will give us ln x replaced by 7 over 2 plus the root, so plus the root of x replaced by 7 over 2, so we'll have 7 over 2 squared plus 1. So if I continue over here, I'll have ln 7 over 2, so 7 over 2 plus and 7 over 2 squared plus 1, that is the same as root of 53 over 2. So that is one of the answers for x. So that is the solution for x in terms of ln. Okay. However, we have another value of t being minus 2. So when t is minus 2, so x when I replace will be the inverse hyperbolic sine of minus 2 and let's calculate that so if I replace the x's in the definition by minus 2's we'll have ln x replaced by minus 2 plus the root and minus 2 squared is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 so that is the other value, the second value for x in terms of ln. So that completes the part and that ends the question. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, a like rating is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related problems and I hope to see you again. Thank you.